I'd just like to say a couple of things about Rod, myself, Daryl, and everyone in GAP. We are not politicians. We are ordinary people trying to do extraordinary things. We didn't want to stand up here and speak like this. I want to get on with my life. But there's certain people who are in the way, not just in my way, but in all of your way, to exercise your own freedoms. There's a monolithic, ruthless conspiracy to take away your rights and freedoms. And the same people that JFK spoke about in regards to the monolithic conspiracy, they are the same people. They are the same groups. And they have been planning this for a long time. And people have to realise and you have to warn your kids because these people will never go away. They want you, they want to control you and they want to break down the family unit and they want to destroy society as we know it. And that's why we are standing up here because we like society as it is, well, as it was a few years back. So let's talk about what's stopping people travelling in this great land. A federation bought the, the borders of Australia, or should I say the colonial boundaries of the uh, colonies, fell away to the shoreline. Now these boundaries basically opened up, or when they were removed, opened up the frontiers of Australia. And we have High Court uh, case law that we can rely on that says that it does not matter which state soil you traverse, you may access the seat of government, its courts and its parliament to do business and to access its seaports. This has been set in stone and these people are trying to make you forget about it. They're saying none of that happened and now we can stop you at these imaginary borders. Now, there's a case from 1945. It's called Gratwick versus Johnson. And there was a brave young lady named Dulcie Johnson. And she traveled from New South Wales to Western Australia to see her fiance. Now, on the way, she was stopped by Officer Gratwick and she was fined for crossing the border without a permit and it was because it was wartime. It went to the Magistrates Court of Western Australia. And guess what the magistrate ruled? That the permit to go across the Western Australian border was unconstitutional. <laughs> then Officer Gratwick said, we can't have that. We can't have the people telling us what to do. We're going to take it to the High Court. And he took it to the High Court on appeal. And guess what happened at the High Court? The High Court said, we agree with the Magistrate. It's unconstitutional to issue a permit to cross the border. So what's happening now? Guys, you have to inform yourself of this information. You also have the right to traverse the Commonwealth roads without hindrance. The High Court have spoken on this. Okay, you have an implied right of freedom of movement. And that comes from Federation. And as we just said, it does not matter what state soil you cross, you have the right to access the seat of government, no matter where you go in this country. Anywhere, any, any alleged border, has anyone ever taken a plane flight from Melbourne to Sydney or Perth to Brisbane? Did anyone ever look out the window and see the border? <laughs> mm, funny about that, isn't there? Isn't it? Well, a, a, another thing is, those, those alleged borders are actually just political limitations of jurisdiction. So it's where for example, the Parliament of New South Wales power runs out and then the next Parliament's power begins. Okay? So there is no border. Yeah. 
Does anyone remember any of the movies from the United States when they were crossing county lines and county borders and they had to, they were outrunning the police and they had to get to the, to the state boundary? That's because the jurisdiction ran out. And that's all it is. In America, they're, they're very well informed about their constitutional rights. And they understand what a political boundary means. And you guys need to inform yourself as well. Now you need to resign and stand with us. Now, let's unpack something. It's called the fraud. We like to call it the fraud of Australia. In 1973, the government issued a bill which became an act called the Royal Styles and Titles Act. In that act, in the preamble, it says that in 1953, the government wrote a, another act for a title. And that title was to be used in relation to the Commonwealth of Australia and its territories. And then the preamble goes on to tell you that now there is a new title and that title is to be used in, re in relation to Australia and its territories. <sighs> Missing the Commonwealth. They removed the Commonwealth in this act. Now the problem with that is, is there's a, another paper from 1973 from an, a, a, the Attorney General's office, uh, law officer, Lindell. And he told the Attorney General's office, you don't have the power in the constitution to write a title for the Queen. There is no power to do it. But they went ahead and did it anyway. Basically what's occurred is you've got a government out of control operating beyond power outside of the Constitution which grants them their powers. It's as simple as that. Now in 1986 the Australia Act came about to bring the states into constitutional conformity with the Commonwealth as a sovereign independent and federal nation. What does that mean? Well, they're talking about political sovereignty. They're not talking about Australia is now independent. It's politically independent, okay? It's a play on words to trick you. There is no independence. You know how I know that? Does anyone remember the 1999 referendum? What did they ask you? They asked, if you wanted to replace the Queen and the Governor-General with a President and become a Republic. So, how is it that we are sovereign and a sovereign independent nation if the uh, government were asking us to get rid of the Queen and the uh, Governor-General and to become a Republic? It's a lie. It's a play on words. It's a deception. And this is the trick that continues to this day. And this is what they're working towards, to removing the Queen and the Governor-General and the protections of the Constitution. The 99 uh, referendum, they actually rewrote the Constitution. And what it actually meant was, you didn't get to decide who the President was. It was actually the Parliament that decides who the who the government is, which is a set up of a dictatorship, okay? You don't get to vote, we do the government. And that's effectively what's happened in this two-tier system that they're running in a parallel fashion next to the constitution. So guys, you need to inform yourself, you need to beware that those people who create those ruthless monolithic conspiracies way back in the 60s and beyond are still here today and they are still trying to run those conspiracies upon you. So it's time to wake up, it's time to stand up, come back, I do believe in it's in, in one month, come back to Canberra. Now one thing, yesterday there was allegedly half a million people here. Okay, I, I, I can only go, Okay, can you hear me out first? Half a million people. Ha half a million people represent one in 50 Australians. Do you realise that? There was one, at least, at least one in 50 Australians here yesterday. If you all go home and speak to 49 people that you do not know, 
and enroll them to come here, you will create magic. I apologise to your domicile, to your residents. Of course we are home. We're in the Commonwealth. So, having said that, everybody needs to go and speak to 49 other people. If there was a million here, you only have to speak to 24. Okay? But people, you need to go and you need to enrol other people, whether that, that's, that you hold the line here in Canberra and you speak to 25 to 49 people in Canberra, stand on the highway, people going past, show your signs, enrol people into coming to Canberra. There's a main event coming and this gentleman is holding the line in this park. Listen! And people need to, what's your name, buddy? Now I'm hearing that there's uh, there's a great amount of people who uh, who want to remain. Now I'm going to hand you over to Daryl O'Brien, who's going to talk about the governor. What's going to happen if we stay? Thanks, Darren. All right. So, as Rod has um, pointed out very clearly. Uh, the Governor General, uh, the Governor General, the Governor General was served with a notice. Who's the Governor General? The alleged Governor General. Listen, listen. Listen, I'm going to, I'm going to call it a day. If you're not prepared to listen, and we're going to be interrupted, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it. Listen, what Darren is saying, you're not going to keep a scaffolding down there for a month. What we're saying is you've got to all hold the line. I'm holding the line. Doing this live stream right now is holding the line, getting the message out. So you can stay here. I can stay up the coast. Doesn't matter. But you, when we say you've got to come back in a month's time, I mean, we're not politically doing this. We don't, we're only just going on the information that we've got, but understand that there's money being donated for the stage. So we're not saying abandon what we've been doing because we're not doing that. And if you let Daryl talk without any interruption, please, because it's so important of what happens now that the Governor-General has abandoned the House. Do you want to listen to that? And if you don't, I'll call it a day.